Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Phil and welcome to Grounded, the series which looks at airlines of yesteryear. This episode will take a look at Snowflake, the short-lived Scandinavian low-cost carrier by SAS. By the early 2000s, the aviation industry was changing. Low-cost carriers were on the rise. Legacy carriers, already in need of cutting costs, suddenly found that the premium market was collapsing and SAS, Scandinavian Airlines, was one of those who had to adapt. This was no longer the airline which over the course of the 1980s and 90s wanted European domination. It had to adapt in order to survive. In 2002 they introduced the Scandinavian Direct sub-brand but would go a step further when they introduced a new low fare airline. Announced in December 2002 under the provisional name of Scandinavian Light, the SAS group stated that they were creating a low cost airline which would target a different market to the regular SAS traveller. They wanted to capitalise on the growth of the leisure market and to do so before existing low-cost airlines such as EasyJet and Ryanair could get a foothold. Snowflake was officially announced on March 19, 2003 and in their initial press release they said that over 90,000 tickets had already been sold. These were of course existing Scandinavian direct reservations. The new airline would have two bases, one at Copenhagen and the other at Stockholm Arlanda Airport. As SAS had recently acquired Brathens, they decided that Snowflake should not serve Norway as they considered the new SAS Brathens a low-cost carrier in itself. Snowflake would use the SAS Air Operator Certificate and flight numbers, as well as pilots and cabin crew. As SAS themselves were facing overcapacity issues, they would pass over four fairly new Boeing 737-800s to the new airline, each with 150 economy class seats. The Snowflake fleet would wear a simple livery with a white fuselage and lemon yellow tail. I'm trying desperately not to make a joke about staying away from yellow snow. The first two aircraft were delivered in late March 2003, cutting it a bit fine for their March 30th launch date. Only two Boeing 737s would wear the Snowflake livery. The other two were regular SAS aircraft rotated in as required as following the removal of business class seats from the SAS short haul fleet, they were now interchangeable. The airline operated flights to Alicante, Athens, Barcelona, Bologna, Dublin, Nice, Prague, Rome and Istanbul among others. Copenhagen would also serve Pristina and Sarajevo with flights aimed primarily at expatriates rather than tourists. The inaugural flights were from Stockholm to Istanbul and Copenhagen to Bologna. Snowflake had a good first summer and by September 2003 the airline was achieving a load factor of 82%. In November the airline introduced a new fare structure consisting of 8 price levels. These ranged from €58 Euros to €228. Euros. Tickets were sold one way and as Snowflake didn't operate a network system the tickets sold were all point to point. In-flight meals and drinks were not included as these could be purchased on board. However, tickets did include one item of checked baggage. They also began offering discounted booking fees for tickets bought online, as these had a much lower base price than booking via a telephone call centre. October would see the introduction of flights to Lyon, Beograd and Beirut from Stockholm, however the following month they axed their flights to Dublin and Barcelona citing low profitability, though SAS would continue to serve Dublin itself. In February 2004 the SAS group's ground handlers went on strike. And while this did have an effect on Snowflake, the airline would introduce flights from Stockholm to Bilbao and Olbia. March would see the summer schedule start earlier than most with flights beginning to Ankara, Lisbon and Parma as well as a few others. Inverness in the Scottish Highlands was selected as the first UK Snowflake destination with the inaugural flight taking place on March 29th. The inaugural flight however had just 23 passengers on the outbound flight and 25 on the return. Hardly an impressive figure. It was at this time that the Copenhagen base dropped their 737s in favour of the McDonnell Douglas MD-82s. These were slightly larger with 156 economy seats and were also painted up in the Snowflake livery. During the first year of Snowflake's operation the airline had sold over 750,000 one-way tickets and planned to double that number over the course of 2004. Despite this, the airline had been operating at a loss, and in 2004 Snowflake was told by the SAS Group management that it needed to start turning a profit or it would either be closed down or spun off from the group and sold. 
Things were getting worse for Snowflake, however, as by May their average load factor had dropped to 40%. The airline announced huge cutbacks to its winter schedule. The airline planned to only operate to four destinations, Athens, Istanbul, Nice and Rome. This was down from 13 the previous winter. Most of these flights were only twice per week as well, further reducing the fleet utilisation. Spanair, who at the time were owned by the SAS group, took over Snowflake's Spanish routes. SAS themselves picked up a few of the dropped Snowflake routes as well, however that Inverness route which had began just weeks earlier was axed, with the final flight taking place on the 23rd of July. On the 18th of August 2004 the SAS group announced that Snowflake would be ceasing operations come the end of the summer season on the 30th of October. The group also announced that the name would live on, however, as a brand for discount tickets sold across the SAS European network. Once the airline had ceased operations, the aircraft were handed back to SAS, however they would continue to wear the Snowflake livery for a while longer yet. There was no need to repaint them as the brand wasn't exactly tarnished, and that they would be seen as a way of advertising the brand. These aircraft would visit plenty of airports which had never been served by Snowflake, the livery would finally disappear in 2007, by which point SAS had dropped the discount ticket brand. So, what went wrong? Well, Snowflake was basically killed off by competition from both Flygammon and Boomer Airlines. Okay, so I got that one out of the way. So what actually went wrong? Well, the short answer is that the SAS group pulled the plug. Snowflake failed to achieve the lower operating costs that had been desired and had been losing money since day one. Snowflake was supposed to turn a profit by having lower operating costs than mainline SAS operations. Unfortunately for all concerned, it didn't. Snowflake was just too entangled within SAS to survive. It didn't have its own aircraft, they were brought in from SAS along with the crew, so there was no cost savings there. The ground services were provided by SAS too, so again, no cost savings to be made there either. The fleet itself was too small to have any kind of meaningful economy of scale. With only a couple of aircraft they found themselves serving routes just a couple of times per week. This might have been okay on traditional charter routes to holiday destinations, but would be less than ideal for flights to city destinations such as Dublin or Prague. For instance, Snowflake was unsuccessful with flights to Dublin and subsequently dropped the route. SAS Mainline picked it up with a much more frequent service and still served the route today. Snowflake was one of many attempts at an airline within an airline and probably the least successful. For example over in the United States Delta had created Song and United had Ted, both of which could be considered somewhat successful with both lasting several years before they were folded back into the respective parent airline. It should be noted that both Song and Ted had much larger fleets and a bigger selection of destinations. Maybe if Snowflake had more aircraft to play with, they would have lasted longer. Aside from some savings made from using an online booking service rather than via travel agencies, the only other cost reduction Snowflake had versus regular SAS operations was the lack of crew overnights. Saving on crew hotel bills and duty pay wasn't going to be enough to justify a separate operation like Snowflake. We will meet Ted in an upcoming episode, as well as many more airlines which have found themselves grounded. Until next time, thank you for watching.